before we get into it, I want 180 likes. It's a big like target. I know we can hit it. Everyone watching this, I'll give you three seconds. Right, I hope you've dropped the like. Right, we're back with another video today. This is a big one. We're back with the National League content. And today, we're going to be ranking grounds slash stadiums 1 to 24 going through our each team alphabetically, this could get interesting. Before we get into the video, make sure to follow our YouTube partner, Non-League Bible. Everything will be in the description down below. Go and follow him on Instagram. He's on the road to 20,000 followers and he produces the best non-league content, so go and drop him a follow. Aldershot Town, now, with a lick of paint, I think this ground could be a decent ground. It's half-seated, half-terrace. Do you know what? We're going to start off with a mediocre ground. So I'm going to put Aldershot's ground in 17th place. Altenham, now there is a lot going on in this ground. I think now they're full-time, they should definitely consider making one big stand on the far side instead of having two small stands. I don't think it looks very nice. This, at the minute, is an average National League North ground. So I'm going to put Altenham... 22nd place. Barnet. Now, I think this is a really nice modern ground. I love the stand that houses the away fans. It's lovely and big. But I do wish they could. They should maybe consider putting home fans in there as well. But when a big team brings a large following, I think it looks really good. I'm not sure what they're doing behind one of the goals. So they've knocked down one of their stands. So it would be nice and interesting to see if they are building another big-ish stand. I'm a big fan of Barnet's Hive. So I'm going to put it in ninth place. Boreham Wood, I think everyone sort of knows what I'm going to say on this one. But we're going to start on a positive. The new stand behind the goal, the new terrace stand, I think it looks smart. And it really does give it a bit more character to the ground. But again, the away end, it's poor. And it's overall a very below par ground for the National League. So I'm going to put Boreham Wood in 21st place. Bromley Hayes Lane. Now they've installed the new stand behind the goal, but kept some older touches around the ground, which I am a fan of. It's a tidy ground and I think it's perfect for them. And I don't know why I might be a bit deluded on this one, but I've put them in 10th place. I've put them very high up. Chesterfield. Now I can't really say anything too bad on the Proax Stadium. It's a big ground, which has a great away end for the away fans. It's probably EFL standard. Do you know what? It's not probably. It is an EFL ground and I do like the Proax Stadium. So I'm going to put Chesterfield in third place. Dagenham and Redbridge. Now no offence to Dagenham and Redbridge, but I'm not really too sure what to say on their stadium. Three sides of the ground look like an average National League ground, but then you've got that big West Stand, which does add some character to it. I think, again, like when teams bring good following, it looks class when it's fully fulled up. I think this is a solid 6 out of 10 ground, so I'm going to put Dagenham and Redbridge in 13th place. Dorking Wanderers. Now, this is never a ground I thought I'd be reviewing. It's mostly standing apart from the small stand and the stand behind the goal. I can assume it does get very busy on match days and it probably will next season. And with the way the club's being run at the minute, I could see ground renovations already potentially happening in the near future. But for now, I think I'm going to place Dorking in 18th place. Eastleigh. Now, I like most other grounds. It's nothing majorly special. It's nothing that stuns you and blows your mind. Um, but they have got that big, nice stand behind the goal, which does obviously hold the away and the home fans it's not the worst ground we've ever seen. I think I'm going to put Eastleigh in 16th place. Halifax Town, the Shea. Now, this is the first biggish ground on this list, apart from Chesterfield, obviously. I don't think this would look out of place in League 2 and League 1. I think it's, it obviously is a massive ground with a big capacity. It would be nice, though, to see if it could get filled more on match days. But we're reviewing the ground, not what it's like on the match day. It's a mixture of seating and terrace. It's a big ground. I'm a massive fan of it. It holds rugby games as well. So I'm going to put the Shea in fifth place. The Gate said International Stadium. I'm sure me and the viewers can all agree on this one. It's not very good. They've got the two huge stands, which probably get less than 50% filled on the match days. It, don't get me wrong, it's a massive ground, it's a big ground, but there are features in this that just bring it down so many levels. The fans are so far away from the pitch, The, the um, oh, they've obviously got the running track separating the pitch from the stand. 
it's not an away day I'll be gutted to miss and I'm sure Gateshead fans can agree with me on this one. I'm going to put the Gateshead International Stadium in 19th place. Maidenhead United, York Road. Now, considering it's one of the oldest grounds in the world, it's not doing too bad. But having said that, it just is a bit... It's not very good, is it? I think we can agree on that one. It's a very open ground. The stands are really small. And I don't think this would be out of place in the Evo stick or something. So I'm going to put Maidenhead in 23rd place. I do hold my hands up. I'm sorry about this one. Maidstone United. Now, personally, I'm a big fan of that stand behind the goal because it gets filled with those quality Maidstone fans. Other parts of the ground look fairly normal for this league, but overall, I think it's a good ground. And well, if it wasn't as far as it is, I would be looking forward to going to this one. But fingers crossed I can make it. So I'm going to put Maidstone in 14th place. Notts County Meadow Lane. Now this was built when they had huge plans and it was an incredibly exciting project for Notts County. And it's a big shame to see such a great ground with such a huge capacity in the National League. When you go in teams to like Maidenhead and Wealdstone and then you've got Meadow Lane there, it's crazy. It's going to provide a great away day, like we said, for the likes of Maidstone, Dorking, who are new to this league. It's a big ground and I'm sure every team gets excited when going there. There's only one place in Meadow Lane, first place. What a ground. Oldham Athletic going on to another good ground, Boundary Park. What a stadium. Very characteristic with a larger capacity, larger than most teams in the league. I can't wait to go there. I'm sure I'll be able to make this one. I'm a big fan of Boundary Park. And I'm glad that they've got the new takeover in as well. So the club are back on the right tracks. Boundary Park, fourth place. Scunthorpe United. Now, this doesn't look a bad ground. It's above average for this level. It reminds you a bit of how Luton Town's ground used to look. It seems all attached all the way around, I think. Yeah, it's another one I like. And I think I might have placed this a bit too high than I should have done. Um, but for now, I'm going to put Scunthorpe in 8th place. I might really think about this one. And if I do, I'll let you know in the comments. Solihull Moors. Oh. To be fair, the last time I ranked these, they have made an improvement. And they've built that, that nicer stand there. But when we went there in the start of last season, it, there was something about it. But that having said that, it does add some character to the ground. The away end is horrible. Um, and I'm hoping I don't have to go there again. I'm not keen on Damson Park. They've got like temporary stands there and everything i'm surprised i haven't put this lower but there are worse grounds than this so sorry all i've put you in 20th south end united roots hall now long-term viewers of the channel know i have a weird obsession with roots hall i like it but i've slated other clubs for it but i like the fact that they've kept kept the ground traditional i think they are planning on building a new one soon which will be a shame because yeah, like I said, there's something about Roots Hall that I really like. And I'm hoping to go there this season, so I've put Southend's ground in 7th place. Torquay United, now I've definitely seen better grounds, but I think it's perfect for the size of Torquay's fan base. I think they average around 2,500 a game, so it looks good when there's um, the majority of the fans in there. And if they were to get to the EFL and they have the plans to, I think they should definitely look on improving on the away end, because it doesn't look the nicest. But Torquay, I've put your slap bang in the middle, 12th place. Wheelstone grows Venner Vale now. I think they've, well, we know they've been kind to Wrexham in the past, uh, letting us go there for their FA Trophy trip. Um, but I'm sorry, this is the worst ground in the league for sure. There's no real structure around the ground and they, they, they stand on one end. They aren't equal and I think the same is behind the goal as well. And I do understand they might not have the facilities and the money to build better stands onto it. But Wealdstone, I'm putting you bottom, 24th place. Woking, this is a weird one. Like Barnet, I'm a big fan of the stand behind the goal. The stand opposite where the gantry and the highlights are filmed looks like it hasn't been touched in 50 years. So they've got a lovely big stand and then they've just got a stand that's just collecting dust. It's really weird. But again, that adds like an oldish feel to around the ground. It's a bang average one for me, 15th place. Wrexham FC, now what can I say? I'm trying my hardest not to be biased on this one, but it's hard not to. But once the new stand has been installed where the cop is going to be, I think this will be incredibly good. 
It's a big ground, it looks good, away fans seem to enjoy going there. It's filled week in, week out as well, which again, it looks great. No bias on this one, so I'm going to have to put Wrexham in second place. Yeovil Town, now I did quite like the trip there in January. I like the standing terrace that does house the home fans. I, the only suggestion I would say to Yeovil is maybe add some sort of roofing on the away end because although it didn't happen when we were there, I've seen it when Torquay played. The rain was incredible and the fans must have got drenched. So that's the only improvement I would suggest for them. But overall, it's a tidy ground. I'm going to put Yeovil in 11th place. York City, the I think it's the LNER Stadium. This is a really, really nice modern stadium, the most modern on this list. Not too sure about the multicoloured seats though. I think they were first used to cover up any empty seats so it wouldn't seem as if the ground was empty on match days but I don't think York will have that problem this year. It's sort of the same sort of design all the way around the ground. It's a ground I'm really really looking forward to going to this season. York City sixth place. So that is the video. Let me know in the comment section down below your favourite National League ground and yeah I think that we're going to wrap the video up there. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.